Hello, Pokemon trainers! Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Battle Stadium singles video here on iStarly TV. This is part of my Road to Master series where I try to climb the online ranked Battle Stadium singles ladder. And today we have yet another brand new team featuring another brand new Pokemon. At least it's brand new to Scarlet and Violet as of the Indigo Disc DLC, and that is Metagross. If you've been following my channel, I did post a video about Metagross uh, actually yesterday as of the making of this video which showcases this Metagross set in full detail, so it talks about it. And I'm not gonna spend that much time talking about it here, but basically it's max HP and max attack with weakness policy. And what I found in testing is that Metagross does a great job of surviving even super effective hits because it's so tanky, and then it, it does a lot of damage. One big reason we're using it is because it has the stab bullet punch, so it ends up hitting extremely hard after the plus two from weakness policy, and it of course can one hit KO Pokemon like Fluttermane, who is currently the most used Pokemon in the meta. I have some support Pokemon that I brought in this team to help Metagross survive hits better, and that main one right here is Incineroar, which is another Pokemon that I think has been great. I used this in my, I featured in this Incineroar set in my last Complete Battle Stadium singles video, which was with a team that had Incineroar on it. And the set is just bulky. It's almost max HP and then a bunch of defense and then just enough attack EVs to one hit KO Pokemon like Fluttermane with a Flare Blitz. So yeah, I've been really liking this Incineroar set as well. And I think that with Intimidate and Parting Shot and Will-O-Wisp, it does a good job of weakening the enemy so that Metagross can come in and survive a super effective hit and just do a ton of damage. Then I have this Focus Sash Urshifu set that I used on a previous team as well. And I really like this Urshifu set. Uh, this so far has felt like, in my personal opinion, the best Urshifu set that I've tried so far. Just given my playstyle and everything, it's, it's felt really strong. So Focus Sash is great because you get to survive a hit and then just do a ton of damage. Then I actually have Trick Room Porygon. So this is a version of Porygon that I have not yet tried. And it's a modest nature with max special attack and then of course max HP. With the Eviolite item, it still survives hit, hits really well and Fairy is a great typing for it, a, a great Terra type. And it just does a lot of damage and then Trick Room is there. It can support itself with Trick Room because it's already pretty slow. But I do have Pokemon like Metagross and Ursaluna who can also take advantage of the Trick Room. So, you know, Trick Room is a move that I might not use very often. Like, I don't consider this a Trick Room team. But since I'm running this uh, offensive Porygon, sometimes Trick Room could be a very good move to use against certain opponents. So I really like that. And then finally, the last two Pokemon are pretty self-explanatory. They do not need that much introduction. Fire Ogre Pond and Assault Vest Ursaluna. These are both just strong Pokemon in the meta. Very good Pokemon. Uh, they're both in the top five or six at this point. I think they're both in the top five, which the point is they're very, very strong. So yeah, that's the team we've got here today. And I am going to show it off. Uh, I've been liking it. I tested this team a little bit and I, I, I think Metagross is really strong. So we're going to see how it does. Let's get to those games. Here we go, battle number one. My opponent has Gliscor. They also have Incineroar, which is really interesting because Incineroar is not very common at all, and I'm using it as well, so it's interesting to see people use <laughs> use it. Um, they're probably copying me, no. <laughs> so, boo, boo, boo. seeing that Gliscor, Gliscor is just a Pokemon I'm always afraid of. They could bring it, although it's possible that my Urshifu possibly scares it out, but usually they are Terra Water, which is also really good for them. And I don't have anything that can really... I mean, I could use Metagross. Maybe survive an Earthquake. Huh. What else do we like here? Metagross actually seems pretty solid. It's interesting that they do have Incineroar, because that is actually a Pokemon that's decently solid against Metagross. However, I do have Clear Body to block the Intimidate. I think I like these two for sure. And then I probably want to bring a Special Attacker as my last one, either Porygon or Urshifu to round things out. And I think that might end up being... Honestly, they're both decent. I think I lead Incineroar. It's possible my opponent also leads with it. Huh. Maybe just Urshi, or I mean Ursaluna. I always get Ursaluna and Urshifu kind of mixed up because their names are pretty similar, of course. And they're both really good Pokemon. We'll see. I might regret not bringing the Porygon 
I mean, there is a possibility I should have just brought Porygon and used Trick Room because they do have a pretty fast team. So my team does under underspeed them, <laughs> which means that and under Trick Room, of course, I would be faster, but I don't know. I might end up regretting this. Uh, great picture for my opponent. That's a, that's a nice one right there. All right. Uh, as far as Drip, though, I don't love it. They lead Gliscor, which is pretty interesting. I'm not gonna not, I'm, I'm going to fire off the knockoff right away. I could also go for Will-O-Wisp. It's pretty likely they protect, but I'm just gonna go for a knockoff here. If they don't protect, okay, they do protect. Unsurprising, now they get to get off a Toxic. Um, I'm just gonna go Parting Shot here. Although, hmm. Yeah, they're gonna get poisoned. Honestly, they're gonna be, I think they're gonna be faster than me. So I think I just go hard switch into Metagross. Well, they could also go for Earthquake here. Fine, I'll Parting Shot. If they Toxic, it sucks because I would I would not want my, oh, they just Stealth Rock, interesting. I do not want my Incineroar to be poisoned, but we can go into Metagross here. So they have Stealth Rock, which is interesting. We know they have Stealth Rock, they have Protect. That's gonna mean they probably don't have Substitute because I, I feel like they need to have Earthquake. Um, and then maybe their last move is either going to be Toxic or Substitute. But it's it can't be Substitute because that wouldn't really make any sense if you don't have Toxic. So I'm assuming they don't have Sub or Toxic. Either way, that's good for me because <laughs> both of those moves are annoying. Um, we are going to take some damage here. My opponent's at minus two attack. Uh, let's go ahead and go for the Psychic Fangs now. There's no use in, in going for Knockoff anymore. Of course, we could Terrastalize, but I would rather not because... We do kind of want to get that weakness policy activation. That's the whole reason we're running like this Incineroar alongside the Metagross is to weaken the opponent so that we can survive hits from them. And they end up switching. I don't think they have anything that resists Psychic. So this actually works out really well for me. They go into Ogre Pond now. This should do massive damage to them. It does very good damage. Now, I actually do think I will Terra. Let's see. Water's a solid Terra type all around for my Metagross. The the worst case scenario is if they have Fluttermane in, I mean, Iron Bundle in the back. Actually, that could be a real problem if they have Iron Bundle. Is there any chance I survive Ivy Cudgel? They're probably going to, um, hmm. What do I do here? I don't want to switch. No, Terra, Terra. Okay. <laughs> Though if they have Iron Bundle in the back, I'm going to be in a lot of trouble because if they do have Bundle, I would have preferred to save the Terra for my Ursa Luna because then I can take hits from from Bundle a lot better. So if they have Bundle, we might end up losing. But I'm just kind of honestly, I just don't want to switch here because I, I will take this. I was just worried. I mean, it was probably pretty obvious. I could have gone into. Um, Maybe I should have gone into Incineroar there. It's just annoying taking the Stealth Rock damage, and then it means that Metagross will be taking the Stealth Rock damage when it comes back in, which is not that huge of a deal. But now, if they have Toxic, they are going to be able to poison us. So, yeah, this probably was not a great play for me, but I'm still just going to go Psychic Fangs. Looks like they're going Terra, probably Water. Maybe they're expecting the Ice Punch from me. Um, Psychic Fangs... It'll do decent damage, and then we can just, once we die, we can just go into Ursa Luna. Like I said, it's pretty likely they do not have either Substitute or Toxic. Okay, so they, I'm assuming they don't have Sub. They, hey, they could have Sub. If they have Sub, then this is kind of the worst situation for me because <laughs> I should have just stayed in. I should have just, um, you know, not Terrastalized because then they can never poison me. Then they basically can't do anything against me. So that was pretty, pretty awkward, but I mean... Let's see. We go into Incineroar. That doesn't really do that much. We want to eventually get in a safe switch to Ursa Luna because with Hyper Voice we will be able to um, we will be able to kind of break through their substitute if they have it. Okay. Wait, they don't have it, right? Or well, we still don't know the fourth move. We have not seen Earthquake, so they could have Sub or they could have Earthquake. I'm assuming we've seen Stealth Rock. We've seen Protect. We've seen Toxic, so we, we still don't know that fourth move. Um, 
if they don't have Earthquake, I mean, it's still annoying if they do not have Earthquake because they can just poison stall us with Protect, which is very, very obnoxious. But Psychic Fangs is doing decent damage. Okay, they do reveal the Earthquake. So that's good. I'm glad that they do not have Substitute because that is just one of the most annoying moves in the world, <laughs> especially on a Pokemon that's tanky like Gliscor. Um, actually, well, I was going to say now I could go for Earthquake, but now we're we're as good as dead. I'm just going to go Fangs here, even though they're going to protect. If we switch out, it's all the same because when we switch back in later, we die to the Stealth Rock, so kind of just doesn't matter. So I should have just gone into Incineroar previously, but it's okay, you know. It's, it's, all, it's all predictions here. Now I can go into... They did protect here, so now I can go into Ursa Luna... And again, it's going to depend on who their last Pokemon is, but I don't think there's any reason we ever go into Incineroar there because we just can't do any damage to them. I am going to click... I'm just going to click Blood Moon. We just want to kill them. They hit the Toxic. That's very annoying. We're going to knock them out here, presumably. Yeah, Gliscor... Glasgow is just super annoying, <laughs> as you can see here. It's just so hard to take down, but we, we do take it down. We are poisoned, though, so again, it's going to depend on who their last Pokemon is. I think there's a good chance we're losing here. If their last Pokemon are Shifu or Iron Bundle, I think we just lose. Although, if it's Bundle, we can just Vacuum Wave, and there's a chance we can kill them. If it's our Shifu, though, we're just going to get destroyed. It's our Shifu, okay. Yeah, and the thing about our Shifu is... We cannot Blood Moon. That's the thing about Urshifu. The thing about Urshifu is it's Surging Strikes always crits. Yeah, we're dead. Okay, <laughs> GG. It always crits, um, which means that even though we're going to intimidate it with Incineroar, it doesn't matter. They're going to kill us. And then with Stealth Rock, yeah, I don't think there's any chance we survive. So... I should not have Terrastalized Metagross. That was the worst play that I could have done. I was honestly a little, part of it was a little lazy that I didn't want to switch into Incineroar, but another part of it was I just didn't want to take extra damage on Incineroar because I didn't know who their last Pokemon is. But the the honest thing is like, Incineroar just didn't matter. Like a lot of their, their last Pokemon, um, I don't think it matters what I do here because we can't knock them out in one hit. Even if we happen to survive this, which we're not going to, we get the Citrus Berry. Yeah, so I should have gone into Incineroar earlier, even though it was going to die. I should have just let that happen. I just really didn't want them to get behind a sub with with uh, Gliscor, because if they poison something and then they get behind a sub, ugh, it's just so hard to take it down at that point, because we're just, like, we're dealing, like, I don't know, like, it takes, like, I don't know, five hits to knock them out, and in that time, we've racked up so much damage from the Toxic, so super annoying game, super annoying team. Um, I, I, I made a huge misplay by not, or by, by terrestrializing Metagross. I should not have done that. There was kind of not a good reason to do that. And we would have been, we would have gotten the weakness policy from their earthquake. And then, yeah, it, we just made a huge mistake. Uh, then we could have de dealt massive damage with psychic things. We might've knocked them out. And then, and then we could have terrestrialized Ursa Luna or probably at that point, maybe we were better off. I don't know, actually. I was going to say we could terrestrialize Ursa Luna, which would remove the water weakness, but that does not remove the fighting weakness, so we, maybe we were still dead there. With with uh, Incineroar, I could have terrestrialized as a water type, which means I would resist surging strikes, but we just don't have ways to deal damage, so maybe we were going to lose that game anyway. Uh, anyways, let's go to game two. We've got some Ogre Pond, Water Ogre Pond action, and then a bunch of the usual suspects. Urshifu, Ursa Luna, Fluttermane. They just looked at the top. They Honestly, it looks like they looked at the top like six Pokemon and just brought all of them. I think Scizor was number eight at the end of the last month, but, you know, they looked at the top ten Pokemon and, and took all of them. <laughs> Anyways, I do still think uh, Incineroar is a solid lead. Incineroar is just a really solid lead overall, especially since my opponent doesn't have any like clear Stealth Rock Pokemon, which is good because it's always annoying to lead with Incineroar and then if they like set up Stealth Rock with like Ting Lu, like that's kind of rough, but my Urshifu, I don't think I want to bring Urshifu. They have Dragonite, they have their own Urshifu, of course they have Ogre Pond, which has Water Absorb, so it can easily switch in there. Um, I think I like Metagross though. 
think I like Metagross. And then maybe my own Ursaluna? Or do we finally bring Porygon? Porygon struggles against Fluttermane. Though we do have Metagross, which kind of scares away the Fluttermane. Porygon kind of also struggles against their Urshifu, though. Urshifu, once again, is a problem here. Honestly, I think Urshifu is just a problem for my team. Do I bring my own Urshifu because of that? That seems wrong. I'm going to, though. I know that's wrong. I know I just said my Urshifu is probably not great, but I was running out of time there. We do have ways of hitting Ogre Pond, um, so we're just going to have to predict accordingly with the whole Surging Strike thing. <laughs> that's a funny picture. And then as far as like Dragonite, we actually have Ice Spinner for Dragonite. So even the Pokemon that are good against my Urshifu, we still have options for beating them. Um, they're going to lead with Ursaluna, Ursaluna though. Okay, we lower their attack, which doesn't do anything. I could Parting Shot here. I could Flare Blitz. I could Knock Off. There's a lot of options. I could just straight up switch. I think I'm faster. I think. I think I'm faster. In which case, I could Parting Shot. Which could set up my Metagross. Could also Knock Off, which could help. Oh, there's so many options. I feel like they're gonna, are they gonna Terra right away? I'm gonna start with a Knock Off. It's just, yeah, they, they go for Earth Power. We, oh, we survive with one HP. That just shows our HP. Uh, Investment is really important here. That's hilarious. We will die to the vacuum wave though, which they likely have. We go for knockoff, get to see their item, do pretty good damage. Focus Sash, wow, that's not something you typically see on Ursa Luna. That's a, that's a good item. Now I kind of want to try that. <laughs> do we just die to the vacuum wave now? We're already off to a pretty rough start in all honesty. Hmm. Or do we go into Metagross to take the Vacuum Wave and then we have to worry about the subsequent... No! Oh, I meant to do Summary. Oh, no. I feel like it's pretty likely they're going for Vacuum Wave, though. But I did not mean to do that. I was going to check the Summary. If they predict this and go Earth Power... Okay. I was going to check my speed. Wow, they get a crit. I was going to check my speed. Nope. <laughs> I keep doing that. <laughs> Uh, I was going to check my speed. I think I'm faster here, so I think that puts me in a pretty decent position uh, to go just Psychic Fang. Yeah, let's let's see how that goes. Sad thing is, if they go for if if they either survive this or if they're faster and they go for Earth Power, we could be in a lot of trouble. Honestly, they could be they could be they could have investment in speed. Honestly, because if they're a lead Ursa Luna with Focus Sash, they probably just went like Max Special Attack, Max Speed. But luckily for me, we are going to get off a Psychic Fang on Ogre Pond, which is going to do really good damage. And I'm just going to go ahead and go for the second one. They could knock off here. Knock off's kind of the worst case scenario. I mean, Cudgel, if they go Cudgel, we will, I think we'll survive it because it won't be super effective. Um, if they go knock off though, that's probably a worst case scenario, but I don't think they're going to do that. So if we can get a kill here, that's pretty nice. And I do feel like my team's pretty well positioned against uh, that Ursaluna in the back. I, th I mean, the downside is my Incineroar is very close to being dead. Okay, they, they withdraw again. I don't think they have anything that resists Psychic Fangs, and that's been a theme, like, in unless it's Dark Urshi. Oh, no, it's Dragonite. Wow, okay. Kind of okay with this, because we get to break the multi-skill. That does solid damage. Now, I think I'm just going to go for it again, because... Oh, do we survive this? If we do, it's massive. No! Okay, okay, okay. All right, everyone. We did our best. Um, go Incineroar. Huh. Go Urshi and then go Ice Spinner. They're going to just go Extreme Speed. I think we just do that, though. The big problem is they have that Ogre Pawn with Water Absorb. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done this. I think we want to keep our Focus Sash intact. I should have just gone right into Incineroar predicting the Earthquake. 
I would get an Intimidate on them and then I would faint and then I could go right back into Metagross and potentially just take over the game at that point. I guess we have already gotten some damage on their Ogre Pond. Actually, yeah, if they switch into Ogre Pond here, they might die because Ice Spinner would be neutral against them. So if they go Ogre Pond here, we're in a really good position. Oh, or, or if they do this, wow, that's perfect. They might not have expected this, honestly. They might not have expected the Ice Spinner because I don't think it's super common. I don't think it's like, like, you know, on Incineroar or on Urshifu, you always see like obviously Surging Strikes, you know, Close Combat, Aqua Jet. And then from there, there's a lot of options. Wow, they do go back into this thing. I think I just, hmm. <sighs> I think I have to go Close Combat. They're gonna go for Horn Leech. Do we ever just go into Incineroar here? I think we do, honestly. Go into Incineroar and get off the Intimidate. If they predict this, that's crazy. Get off the Intimidate and hopefully just die. Because Incineroar is pretty much as good as dead. We know that their Ursaluna has Vacuum Wave, so um, we know that if Incineroar is our last Pokemon and Ursaluna is theirs, they win because they just vacuum wave and we're dead. So it's kind of like we might as well get value out of our Incineroar as much as possible here. And I see that value as the Intimidate right here, even though they're probably going to kill us. Wow, we take that really well. But unfortunately, they easily just follow up with a Cudgel. So this isn't like the this isn't like a huge victory for me, but I'm just going to go ahead and Will-O-Wisp? I mean, the honest truth- Wow, are you serious? Oh, that was a, such a huge misplay. That was so stupid of me. I should have gone for knockoff just to get off damage. That was so dumb. I mean, the upside here is they are now at minus one attack and they are burned. So I'm. Pr it's pretty likely that my Urshifu will survive a horn leech from them. What? Are you serious? I'm surprised they canceled. I still felt like I I, I was very possible. It was very possible I could lose that. I felt like I was more likely if they played it right. I, I feel like it was more likely that I lose than that they win. Although I had a really good chance there. Um, why did they just spam horn leech? That was so weird. In all honesty, though, I I think I kind of misplayed by going for will o wisp. I I, I mean. I don't know. If knockoff wouldn't have killed, then it was the right play to Will O Wisp. Because the thing is, my thought process is, is I burn them. Eventually, they kill me. If they ever make the right move and go for Cudgel, they kill me. Then I go into Urshifu. They're faster than me. So even though they're burned and everything, the the big problem is they're gonna get damage on me. So my biggest fear was, you know, I go into Urshifu against their Ogre Pond. I'm gonna end up winning that exchange. However, the cost is they're getting damage on me, right? And especially if I have to click close combat in order to knock them out. Like close combat would guarantee knock them out. The problem is I would be at minus one speed and I would have taken damage from their move, which means I, my focus sash would be broken and I would be at minus one. I, I'm at minus one special defense, not speed, if that's what I said. <laughs> and then they go into Ur 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 sorry, Ursaluna and it's possible they kill me with the vacuum wave because I'm at minus one special defense and I've already taken damage. So. That was a wild one. Maybe I'll do a calc on that if I remember, but like uh, it, go do a calc on the minus one Urshifu j with the vacuum wave just to see how much that would have done. But I don't think that battle was over. I mean, I'll absolutely take the win. It was very close. And there was a point in the battle where I was thinking to myself, like I'm about to lose again here. But you know, I think we positioned that pretty well and my team looked good. Let's go to game three. And we have game number three. My opponent's team is very interesting. They have Weezing and Hatterene. Very cool. I kind of like leading with Urshifu in that case. They could also lead with Annihilate, but I think Urshifu is pretty solid against any of those possible leads. They also have Lucario. I like it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna lead Urshifu here. And what about Metagross? Cause that is a Pokemon I really like obviously and want to bring. Hmm. With Goldango, it's kind of tough. Not sure if we can survive a Shadow Ball, but but also, 
Metagross looks decent against a lot of their team overall. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it. And then from there, I think we want something that can help us against Dragonite. Could that be Incineroar? Incineroar is fine against Dragonite. Potentially fine against some of their other Pokemon. I think it's good against Goldango as well. I'll bring it. We'll see how that goes. I mean, Porygon's another option. But Porygon can't touch Goldango, sadly. So yeah, I think, I think Incineroar is a nice one to have in the back. As long as they don't lead Dragonite, I feel like Urshifu is a really solid lead for almost anything they bring. Incineroar. Did I say Incineroar? Did I say Urshifu? I'm, I'm getting all these names mixed up, but I meant Incineroar. They lead with Annihilate. I lead, or I meant Urshifu, I'm so getting them mixed up. Whatever, dude, one's a water type, one's a fire type, right? What's the big difference? Uh, what's going on? Why is it taking long? We're just gonna punch each other, so if you could just hurry. What's going on? Mm, just gonna go ahead and lead with that. Surging Strikes, we should be faster. No, we're not faster, but we're gonna knock him out now. I think I'm adamant, which is a big reason why I'm getting outsped, but yeah, that's fine by me. I wonder if they suspected that I am Focus Sash. That could be interesting, but we get a knockout here, which I'm happy about. Of course, we are really low on health, which means we can't really take too many more hits. But I'm still really happy with this. Like, if they go into Hatterene, we just get to destroy it. If they go into Weezing, that's also fine for us. Goldango could be fine, but probably not. <laughs> Dragonite would be annoying. It is, of course, Dragonite. Why wouldn't it be Dragonite? Why wouldn't it be one of the best Pokemon in the entire game? Just going to go for Ice Spinner here in case they want to try to go for Dragon Dance. They are going to Terra, though, which is fine. As long as it's not Terra Steel... Paranormal, sure, sure. Okay, so I'm gonna Ice Spinner. Um, they're probably just gonna Extreme Speed and knock me out, which is fine. Maybe I should have just gone for Aqua Jet anyway, yeah. Well, actually, duh, if I went for Aqua Jet, it wouldn't have mattered. They still would have outsped me. They get a critical hit. Let's hope that's the only critical hit they get in the game because that one did not matter. Now I get to go into Incineroar and I might possibly just Parting Shot, expecting a potential switch. I think I'm gonna Parting Shot. If they stay in an extreme speed, that's also fine because they'll be at minus two attack. Parting Shot. Or do I knock off? Or do I Will-O-Wisp? Huh. I'm gonna knock off. Yeah, they switch. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of happy I knock, knocked off. Well, Parting Shot would have also been good, <laughs> so it's kind of fine either way, but uh, they go into Lucario. We're gonna knock off their item. It is a Focus Satch, which I was kind of expecting. I could Terra here, but, hmm. I'm kind of tempted to Terra. Terra and Flare Blitz? Or Terra and Parting Shot? I might regret this. I think it's fine to Terrasilize here. Metagross has a fine typing against Lucario. This lets me survive any hit from them and also weaken them as I go into Metagross. Of course, they cannot Terrastalize anymore, which is nice. Yeah, they Aura Sphere. Wow, that does some pretty solid damage though. Yeah, I'm gonna go into Metagross now. And I just click Earthquake. And I should take any hit from them really well. So I get to take a hit from them and then Earthquake. They'll go into Dragonite and I think I'll go right back into Incineroar. I hope I take this hit really well. Like I hope I don't take that much damage because then their Dragonite's gonna be able to eat more easily finish me off later. And the, the nice thing is they can't switch. Uh, that's that's passable. Yeah, the nice thing is they could not switch because then 
I mean, they could switch and they would they would survive the earthquake, but obviously their Dragonite is no longer a flying type, so they, they would take damage from the earthquake. I just hope they don't predict this and go for Dragon Dance, which I think is still fine, actually. I think I actually like my position a lot here. I just I just hope that I can get off at least some damage on their Dragonite. Because, um, I mean, they could be... If they're Choice Banded, then this is also just fine, I think. The Intimidate here is very important. They do Dragon Dance. So what that means is they're at neutral attack. I'm going to take a huge risk here and go for Will-O-Wisp now. Because I feel like Will-O-Wisp just kind of like permanently like locks them out of the game, if that makes any sense. Because they'll be burned, which means that they're just, they're not going to be doing much damage at all to me. And they're going to be taking residual damage every turn. I guess they could have the Lumberry, but we're going to go for this here. Okay, we do hit. If they have the Lumberry, this is going to be a huge setback for us. I'm holding, I was holding my breath. They do not have the Lumberry, so I think we're in a really good position now. Let's go ahead and go for knockoff now. Even if they Dragon Dance again, we're just in such a great position because now we're actually damaging them. And then maybe the following turn, I might just Parting Shot into Metagross. Yeah, we get some damage on them, get rid of that weakness policy, that's great. And I'm just gonna Parting Shot now. I should be able to survive any hit. Actually, would Flare Blitz kill them? I don't think it would. So I'm just going to Parting Shot. Yeah, they Dragon Dance. Parting Shot will put them at... I think we're still at a point where... Where Metagross will survive a hit from them, even an Earthquake. Of course... Well, I could also just Bullet Punch, right? This is pretty scary, everyone. I'm going to, I'm going, I'm going to be honest. If I bullet punch and I survive a hit, then obviously I could just bullet punch again and win the game. If I bullet punch and kill them, obviously I just win the game right then and there. If I bullet punch... I'm gonna psychic things. I think it's more likely to kill them. What? Well, wait, what? <laughs> okay, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Anything that'll allow me to kill a Dragonite, I'm happy to do. I don't know why they clicked Outrage. They clearly have Earthquake, right? We only saw two moves from them, both of which I resist. But hey, if I can kill a Dragonite, I am not going to complain. <laughs> all right, so that ended up being pretty good. I really like that. And I brought Metagross to all of the battles as well. So you can kind of see it, it, it's really well positioned there. And even there, I, I expected them to have Earthquake. They never went for it, but even if they had gone for it, I was pretty confident I could survive it pretty well. I would get the weakness policy boost, then I would just destroy them with whatever move I went for at that point. So um, you can see how Metagross and Incineroar work really well together. So I feel like if you're going to bring this Metagross set, you really do want to make sure you have the support for it. I think Incineroar is a fantastic support option, um, but there are others. You know, if you want to run some Pokemon with light screen, you could run Aurora Veil or you could run uh, Alolan Ninetales, which has Aurora Veil. You could run like Grimmsnarl, with, which has screens as well that have priority. There's a lot of really good options, but like I said, this Metagross set is really, really strong. Um, it just might require a little bit more support. You know, obviously it just destroys Fluttermane, but Fluttermane also has access to Terrastalizing, which can throw you off. So a lot of things to consider, but I think this Metagross set is very good and I've been enjoying it. And this Incineroar set also like, they're, they're two Pokemon that, like, it's kind of rare when I feature a Pokemon like that that's not very commonly used. I kind of rarely end up bringing it to the battles, but in this video, I brought Incineroar and Metagross very often. So I think that shows you just kind of how good they are or how good they can be. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the team, what you thought of the video, the battles. As always, you are welcome to leave a team code for me or let me know in the comments other Pokemon you'd like me to build around in the future and I'm happy to oblige. So thank you all for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet videos. I really appreciate every single one of you. I know lately I haven't been great at replying to all of the comments, but just know I see them and I'm really excited, really happy, and I do really appreciate every single one of you. Even if you're not gonna comment or you're not commenting, I still appreciate you. If you're listening to this right now, I appreciate you so much. So I hope you have a wonderful day, just like you deserve. And I will see you next time. It's cold.